Okay, here we are to talk about collections. I think people should realize this. When you form a collection, you have to form it with at least something that has some value to it. Um, if you want to be serious about it. If you're just someone that wants to put something on the wall so you can look at it like these pops. I don't think these pop collectibles are going to be worth much money 50 years from now. I'm just being very honest with you. When I look at these Back to the Future pops or the Pan Am pops or the Baywatch I got a couple of Ghostbusters, the Jeffersons. I like those. Those are funny. Nothing like George Jefferson. Um, let's just say that I don't see any value in them, and the only way they're valuable is if you have the whole set, and even the whole Pan Am set's only worth about thirty or forty bucks. Um, the Back to the Future set is massively huge. There's tons of them, and I don't even know if I could have. No, I definitely couldn't afford to buy them. I always thought. It was stupid for me to collect sports stuff until I realized that it's not. When you look at some of these things, these Funko Pops, whatever you want to call them, they can get even more expensive than that. I was just at a flea market. This, they're throwing them on a table, it's, and they're outside in the sun and all that, and they want $70, $80 for these things. Some of them even look worn out. I'm not going to buy a pop that's worn out, worn out for 80 bucks. That's ridiculous. And eBay is a real, you know, very tough, very tough to buy from eBay. Um, I don't make sound like I'm trying to rub it in, the fact that, you know, you have to buy something expensive to, to have a collection. But I feel, I, I, that's how I feel. I feel like there's no point collecting anything if you're not going to have at least some really nice stuff behind you. That, that you can, like, you can bring into the future of your life or you can hand down to somebody else. Um, these pop collections, even if they were expensive, there's going to be a lot of people that may not want these things in their house 40 years from now. Um, and you know, I could even say, sometimes I could say stuff about the gargoyle stuff. I feel like the gargoyles memorabilia that I have, that you saw from my unboxings, I feel that it's going to take a long time, maybe another couple of decades, they will be worth something eventually. The show was just never paid attention. No one paid attention to gargoyles. It's going to take a while, but people are going to realize what great storylines are put into the show and what great stuff came out for it. And the comic books and all this other stuff that involved gargoyles. And they're going to say... And, um... Just, just, just say that... You know, Gargoyles is a is a show that that's popular. Forgive me, I got distracted now. It's it's a very popular show, and I think if people gave it something, gave it its attention, it could be worth something. A lot of the stuff. The only Gargoyles things that I saw that were ever worth anything on eBay were those picture cells for the animation or whatever it was called. And, um, you know, the problem with it was, is that you don't see too many people with them. I saw maybe one or two unboxings online, and I said to myself, you know, what are people doing with these picture cells? They're very hard to get. The authentication, I don't know anything about them, whatever they are for the animation. So if I was to buy one, I won't need. How do I know if it's if it's even real? Or someone didn't try to duplicate it or something. Like it's it's an iffy business, you know. Letters of authentication going back to the nineties, early two thousands, before holograms and stuff, was a little crazy because all there was was signatures, and signatures don't mean anything. You can get someone to sign anything. That doesn't really mean anything. You need a professional company now to authenticate, like for the sports and all that on, what is it, PSA or whatever the hell it's called. You need stuff like that to authenticate your items completely. Um, or else your item ain't worth shit. Uh, I see that when you go to all these conventions and stuff, people are buying signed memorabilia. Um, even if they have some, a sign of authentication, I think it's better to get double authenticated, meaning... Send your item out to this PSA company, whatever it's called, and then they can double authenticate your item just to make sure that it's actually um, the real thing.
And um, that's how I feel. I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. You know, a lot of people are buying collectibles and they're getting screwed big time because they they have no idea what they're buying or they um, buy stuff that's cheap and they think it's going to be worth money one day. Um, it doesn't mean if you buy something expensive that it's going to be worth money in several years from now. But I can tell you that at least it'll be worth money now. Or you could buy something that's shit and then it may never be worth anything at any time. Um, I, I, I didn't buy any of these pop, Funko Pop things for value, value of money. I, mean, I bought the Gargoyles once. They weren't particularly... Um, I know they weren't going to be worth much. It, it just kind of it kind of sucks because um, the only way there's no really way there's no real way to put a value on your collection unless you have something sports related because they have other things you could really compare them to. There's no way to put a value on your collection until you try to sell it on eBay and you see who's going to buy it, who's going to spend that certain amount of money. I want to tell you right now, you, eBay's pretty rough. There are items on there that are that are there for years before people buy them. And like if you're looking to buy a sports item, you might find a baseball that's been sitting there for 30, 40 years. It's because people will save up for it and then they forget about it and don't buy it. There could be several reasons for it. It's just probably because they're too much money. That's why I don't understand some of these people, why they don't lower the price on some of their items. It's been on eBay for like three or four years. No one's, no one's biting. No one's going to buy the item. Maybe you should lower it a couple hundred dollars. If you're selling something for 5000 bucks, lower it down to maybe 4500 if no one buys it after a couple of years. I mean, I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, you know, even video games are starting to get into the collectible realm. A lot of the older systems, a lot of Nintendo 64s and all that, um, certain video game, um, certain versions of a video game, like, I'll tell you what a small collectible, it's like 70 bucks, well, or 80 bucks, but I didn't buy it for that. Hit the Simpsons Hit and Run. But if you go look online, no matter what version of it you see on e um, eBay, it's kind of like a collectible now because its price has been skyrocketed. Um, that's just how it is. Um, baseball cards, you know, I looked at baseball cards. and Baseball cards is a tough business. If you're not a well-established person, no one's going to buy from you. And that's that. You know, I've seen people in my life, they bought baseball cards and it's like they spent thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on them before they actually became famous. So it's a, it's a business that you have to buy into and you have to get lucky. You have to go to the stores and find the right cards. Unless they're worth thousands of dollars and you can just buy them off eBay and resell them. But to me, I think it's a little ridiculous. Um, I'm not too ha I'm not too happy with that trend either. What these people are doing with baseball cards, selling them for like thirty thousand dollars on eBay or more, that's a little outrageous. I could see buying something for maybe um, like three to five thousand dollars, but when you start getting into the fifty thousand dollar range, thirty thousand, a hundred thousand, it's a little ridiculous. Can you even trust a website like eBay to help you out? Just imagine if you got screwed over on a hundred thousand dollar transaction through PayPal or eBay, how many problems you would have getting that money back. It's not just, I don't think they're just going to flick a switch and refund it. So, yeah, I can imagine that. Let's say I became a millionaire and I was worth like $400 million. I wouldn't buy a, um, something that expensive or expensive off of eBay. That would just be ridiculous. You find yourself, you have to call yourself stupid to spend that much money on eBay on something because if something goes wrong even if you're a millionaire a hundred thousand dollars it's going to be pretty scary to go through a transaction so i wouldn't spend a hundred thousand dollars no matter what it's just um that's how it is it's it's unfortunate you know i want everyone to have a good collection but if you don't buy a decent collection you won't get a good collection that's all there is to it so you can try yourself to um to make a collection for yourself, but it's kind of stupid, and it's not worth it. In video games itself, only the rare video games are worth anything, in the rare systems. Um, on, on, in, in the rare video game, yeah, I said that. 
all the other stuff in video games ain't worth anything. Like if you go buy a game, like I bought a game, MLB 07 The Show, for like $3 at a flea market, it's not worth anything online. There are games that will never be worth anything, and sports games will never be worth anything. Well, there are a few, but most sports games, once you buy them, that's it. They're worthless once, as soon as you open it. Like a Madden game. Madden games are all worthless. Because of the simple fact there's so many of them, when you buy one, it's not even worth five bucks anymore a few years from now. All right. Bye-bye.